In this video, I'm going to give you some practical tips during your design thinking process so that you can avoid some major design mistakes at your final stage. Let's get into the video. Things to remember. Number one, design process is an iterative process. It is not linear. Linear in the sense like usually we have in other uh, domains or fields, we usually follow some sort of process to get a result. That is what we usually do in the schools or colleges or do something in the experiments, like whatever you do, you have to mix things, you have some procedures, you have some protocols to follow and then so that you will get the final result. It's like if you want to try something else, you have to write again another procedure properly from the start to end so that you can do it again the similar way and get the results. It is like we would have followed these protocols and procedures during our schools or colleges in laboratories and other maybe in other programs like it depends. In this design, it is not required. So it is not a uh, linear process that you can follow with some procedure or protocols. It is a non-linear process where you can only think on your own to find the solution. You have to find different ways, different thinking and use uh, different methods and techniques to find a solution. So let's say, for example, if you are given with us some problem. So usually what we do, we are currently using some common design process called uh, design thinking process where uh, everyone is following mostly which will have some sort of five stages empathize define ideate prototype and test so these can be the major five stages that you will be using in your design process maybe you might have been following different sort of design process if you are uh, if you have some experience in it or you modified your process based on how you get the uh, requirements but it depends on the designers like it is personal it is uh, on their own so uh, we can question that but uh, the some sort of similar design process is this so, but what like what will improve your work gradually what will uh, improve what will be helpful for you to get good better results which means we need to alter our design process based on the requirement that has been given to you you don't need to do all this like uh, in secondary research you have to search for the competitors combine the methods and come up with some market research do some analysis and SWOT analysis and everything and then in the primary research you have to connect with the users get their feedbacks and uh, try to implement them in your application and it is not all required whenever it is needed and during the primary research then then again after ideating you have to follow different types of techniques you have to spend this much of time for each and every research. no it is not required actually like what you can do is you can start writing on your own like start thinking on your own like how you can take this take a problem towards let's say a client has given some idea to you uh, like we want something uh, out of this idea as an application or something like that this is from scratch so you have to do whatever you think of from the start to end like you have to follow all the stages in design process of course but at some times people will have already designs but we will have their designs already and they might have done some secondary research already or primary research already so in that case is what you can do is you can just uh, brush off all those researchers to know better about it or uh, you can just conduct a small sort of research based on the timeline again so you have to do research and design based on the timeline that has been given to you commit according to that so don't commit anything without knowing the timeline that will kind of mess up your work and also your credibility so it's better always to look on your timeline and then commit to your work and spend accordingly don't spend less time in research or nothing in research and don't work on design almost then you won't be getting the good results of course start the process equally and then start working on it so this is the first thing you need to remember number two try to convey something to someone during your design process use visual and object languages so that everyone can understand what you're trying to say uh, usually what why we do use markers and boards when we are presenting something to someone we use presentations we use other sort of like visually pleasing things to make them understand whatever we are trying to say and so that they can be more interactive towards whatever you're saying so this is why we need some sort of visual representation that will help your presentation to be better and make them understand better as well and uh, it can be a great start for you to invite your group members to your like they feel uh, giving lot of ideas towards this if they understand 
well so it's always better to start with or communicate with visual and object languages mostly when it comes to design thinking process like or if you are working in a team or group you have to present in a sketches or wireframes or something that that whatever the idea comes in your mind so that everyone can understand keep that in mind and number three if you haven't done any user research yet or uh, you haven't connected with any users being a designer please uh, try to connect try to uh, conduct some interview on your own for any purpose like uh, you can see how ca you can empathize with the user so that if something comes in your work you can easily do it and you don't need to worry about like how I have already posted some uh, user interview how you can frame the interview questions and surveys so that you can enhance your uh, user research skills so that will help you out uh, please start doing some internal interviews like whatever you want to do maybe it can be a personal project work uh, problems that you want to solve you can start doing the user interviews it doesn't need to be a dummy uh, projects like a all the time it doesn't need to be a dummy data all the time you can just really connect with users so that you can get some insights so that you understand yourself on how you are uh, empathizing with the users by understanding their emotional needs and uh, maybe psychological needs and number four is generate ideas using divergent and convergent thinking so if you don't know what is divergent and what is convergent here are some examples i can give so that you can understand you know how to think differently uh, because that will help you to think in all the ways not only getting the answer but also creating some ideas between towards the answer so how you can differently answer is what uh, will make you think mostly so what happen is like let's say if i'm if, if you're asking some question there is some dictionary uh, if I want to answer some question, I can search the dictionary or if I have something in my mind, I can say that. But uh, if that is meant to be an answer, I would answer that immediately if I have it in my mind. Or what I do is like I'll, I try to think of and come up with different answers so that it will help me to think more and generate more ideas about it. So hope you understood. Let me show you the example. In this diagram, you have two types of thinking in humans. So one is conversion thinking and one is diversion thinking. For conversion thinking is a type of thinking that involves finding the most effective answer to a problem. So that is what we usually do. If you think in a diversion way then you will be generating creative ideas to explore many possible solutions this happens uh, when you think differently when you try to th explore more things and when it comes to conversion thinking there is only one right solution but divergent thinker can generate multiple solutions and conversion thinking uses detective reasoning and it always needs some reason to come up with an answer but when it comes to divergent, it can be imaginative. It is an inductive reasoning. Convergent thinker can always come up with accurate, speedy and logical solutions. But divergent thinker can come up with spontaneous, free flowing and non-linear solutions. And convergent thinking takes less time. Divergent thinkers takes more time. And number five is rapid prototyping. So this one is you need to consider as a very important practical tip that you can follow in your current journey, design thinking process journey. So um, what is that? It is a technique that allows you to avoid a lot of debates with your teammates. So easily makes others understandable and they won't, if they have some questions still they can ask, but when it comes to rapid prototyping, you are showing them whatever is possible whatever that can happen and so that no one have questions in it no one have doubts in it they can have some other ideas they can uh, of course say that when you're showing it but uh, it will be very clear what you're trying to say but it won't be misconveyed it won't be misunderstood it is a very good tip for you to uh, implement in your current designer journey so yeah that is all for now and these are the very simple steps that we might not know or we might not think of that will help us to grow as a better designer also foster our design process as well as get us good results i forgot to mention that we are in the journey of ux lesson i think we have completed five lessons like uh, still few more to go so i'll try to complete as soon as possible so that everyone will be completed with their projects so yeah, if you haven't watched yet, please go watch from the first episode so that you can understand it better and you can also start getting into a designing field. That is all. Thank you so much for watching. Hope this was helpful. I'll meet you all in the next video. Bye-bye.